Frank Hardin has joined us. He is from the Noble Research Institute and he's a good friend of ours. Frank has lots of great resources and lessons um, available for teachers, especially in middle school and the high school teachers. Um, today he's going to be sharing with you some of his uh, science exploration trunks and letting you know how you can access those and that's a fabulous resource for you. So Frank, we're going to let you take it away. Thank you. Great, thank you all very much. And thanks for the opportunity, I really appreciate it. And I always enjoy um, having the opportunity like this to reach out to teachers. At, um, and over the next several hours, I'll tell you a little bit about um, our, pro I'm just kidding. It won't be several hours, it'll just be um, a few minutes. Okay, so a little bit about the Noble Research Institute. If you're not aware, um, we are in Ardmore, Oklahoma. And um, we're about 30 miles north of the Oklahoma-Texas border. And um, this is what our campus looks like. Um, we were founded in 1945 by Lloyd Noble. And we were founded in response to the Dust Bowl. Um, Oklahoma was devastated. And we were founded to teach people to take care of the soil. And today we, we do a lot of the same things. We still teach people to take care of the soil and appreciate the soil. But we also try to solve or provide solutions to some of agriculture's greatest challenges. And we do this primarily in three ways, through research, um, through producer relations, and this is just a team of, of experts in all the areas of agriculture that will go out and help people with their agricultural programs, and then through education. And we have an ed adult education component that's been with Noble since its inception. And like I said, this is that producer relations side where the consultants will go out and teach people and help people with their programs. But about eight years ago, we started the youth education program. And we started it because we started hosting a lot of youth tours on campus about 15 years ago. We've always hosted tours on Noble campus since we started. Um, but about 15 years ago, we started hosting a lot of youth tours. They were very interested in coming and, and finding more out more about the Noble Research Institute and, and what we did. And it was in hosting these tours that we began to realize that there was a huge disconnect between today's youth and agriculture. And we'd hear some pretty incredible things and see some pretty incredible things when it came to, to agriculture. Um, the students just didn't know where beef came from. They'd say things like, I'd never eat beef that came from a cow. I'd only eat beef that came from Walmart. And even last year um, in one of the schools, I asked the students, this was a middle school class, where beef came from. And they said, the ground. And I said, wow, that's pretty incredible that they put this together. The ground and the soil is the media for which plants grow and then the cows eat the plants. And so really that kind of does come from the ground. But as I was explaining this to them, they said, no, 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 no. Ground beef, it comes from the ground. And that's when I realized that they really weren't putting it together. So there's still a disconnect today. And, and we're trying to do something about that, like, like Ag in the Classroom is doing and, and all kinds of wonderful organizations as well. They don't know where cotton comes from. They don't know it grows on a plant. And they don't know that, that the clothes that they wear almost every day of their lives comes from agriculture. And they don't know that strawberries grow on plants or even that, that they have DNA in them, that they're alive and they're made up of cells. So, we realize that today's youth are tomorrow's leaders and educators and consumers. And if we didn't try to do something to help this disconnect, agriculture could suffer some great challenges in the future. So that's sort of why we put the youth education program together eight years ago. And today what, what our goals are, are really to increase student knowledge about agriculture and its importance to the community and to society. And we wanted to great, create a, a greater sense of appreciation for agriculture and all of the science that goes into it. 
And then we also wanted to talk about careers and, and tell them about the vast array of careers that are out there. A lot of them just think that if you want to get into agriculture, you farm or you ranch. And there's almost 400 different types of careers, maybe more in agriculture. And we try to tell them, hey, if you want to be a computer scientist, you can get into agriculture. If you want to be a lawyer, you can get into agriculture. There's all kinds of careers out there. And then finally, we wanted to provide teachers with the tools that they needed to help deliver science and agricultural lessons in the classroom. And we do this primarily through, through science. Um, we service really fifth grade through 12th grade. I know it says sixth there. We do have a robotics program that we host that, that, that tailors to the, to the fifth grade. But most of the lessons that we have and that we've created are geared for middle school and up. Um, we have programs for undergraduate students and graduate students as well. But what we've done is, is we're trying to address this disconnect and create and foster this greater sense of appreciation for agriculture and science through hands-on science. Um, we realize that, that there's just a lot of worksheets, generally speaking, in the classroom. And this isn't because this is what the teachers want and what they think is the best way for students to learn. We know that's not the case. And we realize that a lot of it has to do with funding and availability of resources. Um, and, and we're trying to get that, that hands-on component into the classroom as easily as possible. Um, I'm a formally trained scientist. I'm a huge believer of if, if you wanna learn science, you need to do science. So we've put together a lot of hands-on lessons that are gonna be available, that are available now. And what's cool about these lessons is they're not lessons that we just dreamt of and created. We got together with the teachers in our area and we asked them, what do you need in your classroom? What's something, what's a topic or a lab that you'd like to see that will help you reinforce concepts that students are having, a, having trouble with in their classroom? And so we got a lot of ideas and we'd go to the lab, we put together some hands-on lessons to try to reinforce some of these ideas and we tested them. And if they worked, we kept them. And if they didn't work, we sort of put them on the back burner or we retailored them, redesigned them and brought them back in. So all of the lessons that we have now have been, have been referred to us by teachers and we figure that if they needed them in our area, then other teachers might need them as well. So we're making those available to anybody who, who wants them. And I'll tell you a little bit about how you can go about getting these trunks. So all of our trunks that we have, and I'll show you where you can sign up for those shortly, um, all the trunks that we have have a teacher's guide in them. They are all have, have the 5e learning model in them as well and they all list the standards that are being covered for that particular lesson so when you teach this lesson in your classroom you know exactly what standards you're addressing and what you can check off so i'll show you a little bit about the teacher's guides in just a minute as well but this is really what the trunks look like um, it's very important to say these are free you don't have to pay for shipping you don't have to pay for return shipping. You don't have to pay for anything except for a few things that we can't ship. So um, in one of the trunks, we talk about the carbon cycle. It's a carbon cycle based trunk and it requires dry ice, which is readily available at the grocery stores and it requires soda. And so those are things that we can't ship in a trunk because the soda will go flat and that'll defeat the purpose. And then dry ice, we can't ship because it's, it's um, a, of the shipping regulations and restrictions. Aside from that, you get pretty much everything you need to teach, it, to set up rather 15 stations where students work in groups of two or four, depending on the lab. And you have enough material to teach that particular lesson up to eight times. So all of this comes in the trunk for free and it's available for anybody who wants to use it. Um, safety glasses come in the trunk, um, nitrile gloves come in the trunk, 
and again, for, for the whole class, for eight classes all day. So you get all of this and all of the equipment that you need to teach that particular lesson. And like I said, minus one or two things in a couple of the, of the trunks. But I'll tell you a little bit about what's in the trunks and the different types of trunks that we have. And, and these trunks can be taught in middle school. They can be taught in high school. All of the information that you need is provided to you to teach these. And it's just whether or not you, know, you can teach to the high school students by including maybe some more in-depth information, or you can teach to middle school students, just depending on on who, what kind of classroom you've got. Um, and I'll show you what comes in the trunk in, in just a second. Um, what are some other things I wanted to mention about the trunks before we dive into what you get? Um, I don't know, I'll think of it in just a minute. And I'll, in the next slide or in the slide at the end, I'll show you the website that you can go to to check the trunks out. Um, there's a flyer that we've put together that has all of that information in there as well and um, we'll go from there. So every trunk that you get um, that's shipped to you comes with a, a blue folder inside of it. And in that folder are, are a bunch of, of helpful materials. There's a, a guidelines sheet that you can go over that has instructions about the trunk and um, how to use it, the responsibilities for us and, the, and what we're providing and the responsibilities for you. Um, there's a supply checklist so you know exactly what you're getting and when it's time to repack the trunk, you know exactly what to put back in the trunk in case things get st scattered around, around the classroom. There's instructions on how to unpack the trunk and um, what's inside of it. So anything that you might need to know about what's inside the trunk is in this as well. There is safety data sheets for anything that's included in the trunk. So you can go over those if you need them. Sodium bicarbonate, it's just baking soda, um, relatively harmless, but the safety data sheet is there just in case you need it. Um, and then the teacher's guide. Now this is available for download. Um, and we're probably going to make this available just a digital copy so we don't have to put these in the trunks. Um, we'll probably make all of this available um, digitally so we don't have to keep shipping these things out. But you can have it, use it, download it, and it has all of the information that you need to teach this lesson in here. Um, how it relates to agriculture what scientific concepts are being covered in that particular trunk. And just back general background information that you need to feel confident when you teach this to your students. Frank, we and, did have a question come sure. in. Are uh -huh. the trunks available across the state or just in a particular area? They're available across the state. In fact, they're available to the whole United States. Um, we've presented in National Science Teaching, Teaching Association several times and our trunks have gone to both coasts um, into Texas and to a couple other states we we presented in New Orleans so there's some trunks that have been to Louisiana before and a couple other states but the U.S. we're really starting we've only been doing that for about two years now so we're going to continue with um, National Biology Teachers Association and NSTA presenting there to try to get these trunks out to whomever. And we've never really, we have a, a limited number of trunks, like for the carbon cycle trunk, which is on your screen now, I think we have five of those trunks available. Um, we've never run into an instance where we couldn't give that particular teacher their first pick on when they wanted to have that trunk shipped. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen, but if it does, when you go to check out the trunks online, there are three options for when you'd like to receive the trunks. And like I said, all, all the time, every time we've done this, we've never had to go to the sec second option because we have them available, so many, so many available. Um, 
so hopefully, hopefully that an answered the question. Another, another thing that you, that you might find interesting is aside from just having the teacher resource, Embedded in the teacher resource is a student resource as well. So if you want to print that out and give it to your students, they can have a copy as well. And also we've put together for some of the trunks, but eventually all of the trunks, actual videos on how to do these particular lessons, how to, how to do the experiments that come in the trunks. So a lot of, a lot of educators find that very helpful to actually see the experiments being done. And we do host, um, with the help of Ag in the Classroom and other organizations, um, we will get back to one day in-person trainings where you can attend and we'll actually go over some of these trunks hands-on. Um, so we've been doing that for years and once everything blows over, we'll continue to do it. Um, to further help out, we also include pictures on how to put the trunks together or the, the experiments together on the student's desks. So it's just a guide for you to go by where to put everything and how to set it up. Now, these are pictures of the carbon cycle trunk. And like I said, it comes with, with everything that you need to do it. Um, this particular trunk, like I said, does, does require a couple of small items. Um, when you're finished and it's time to pack the trunk up inside of that blue folder that I showed you, you also get a pre-printed return shipping label. Um, you get zip ties as well. So when you're done, there's instructions on how to repack the trunk. This one comes with universal indicator. Now, we have to be a hazmat certified shipper in order to ship that to you but we don't want you to have to take on the responsibility to become a hazmat shipper to return that to us. So instructions are here for this particular trunk asking you to keep the remaining universal indicator so you don't have to sh ship it back and assume that responsibility. So while it might seem pretty easy, just throw everything back in the trunk, um, more often than not, it is that simple, but we do have instructions um, to do that as well. And then we have the, the FedEx instructions too. So package it back up, put the zip ties on it, put the return shipping label on, and then you can get online on FedEx and request a pickup or um, however you want to go about doing that. You drop it off at FedEx if you want to, but we really want to make it as easy as possible. And FedEx does have the option, you get online, you request a pickup and they'll come out and pick it up from you. Um, so it's, it's really that easy to check the trunks out. All you need to do is go to, these, these are some of the areas where our trunks have been. Like I said, the New Orleans dots aren't in there, but um, coast to coast and hopefully we'll spread that out even further. This is where you can go to check the trunks out. For more information about the Noble Research Institute in general and what we do, you can go to noble.org or for more information about our youth education program and where to actually check the trunks out, you can go to that second longer address there. And I want you to know too that, that we're, we're available. There are three of us in the youth education program. And if you have any questions or need any help, we're always available by phone or email, um, however you choose to answer any questions you might have. So we want to try to make this as easy as possible to get the materials that you need to teach these lessons and make you as comfortable as possible sharing these lessons with your students. So we're really here to help. And when you go on the website, um, you will see the trunks that are available. I'll tell you a little bit about each one of those or what we've, what we've got in just a minute. And I do see that there might be a typo. I don't know if that's the actual address there and it should say outreach, but I copied and pasted this address. So I'm not, I'm not sure if that's correct or not. But um, give it a shot. That doesn't look like it's spelled right. Frank, um, we do have a question. Uh, sure. Do you ship in the plastic tubs or are there other boxes involved? I'm sorry, is there? The, the kits, do they ship them in the plastic, plastic tubs that we saw them in? Or yes. do there, are there other boxes that come with that? No, they're shipped in the, tr in the trunks that you see. And inside the trunks, 
you'll find all of the other stuff. So you'll find bubble makers like this in the trunks and you might find other boxes that look like this. So this is, this is one experiment that you can put on the desk. So there might be 15 of these inside the trunk. So when you get it, it will be one trunk that looks like what's on your screen there. But inside there might be some other boxes and that's really to make it easier to pack things up. But, um, but yeah, this is, this is what you'll get is that one trunk and you open it all up from there. Um, a couple things about the trunk. So we have a carbon cycle trunk that's really popular. What's neat about the carbon cycle trunk and some of the other trunks that we have is not only do you teach students about the carbon cycle and the importance of the carbon cycle and the impact that we, we have on the carbon cycle, but inside the carbon cycle trunk, there's three experiments that the students are gonna do. And in each of those experiments, there's other scientific concepts that you can talk about inside. So the first one, um, you know, you get, you get some, some bowls that you're gonna put hot or cold water in. And then inside of that, you have a plastic cup that you'll put your, your soda in. And when you set your cup in the hot or cold water, what will happen is in the hot water, it will start to bubble more. And then you can talk about why is it bubbling? Well, it's bubbling because when they make the soda, they add all the sugar and flavoring and all that stuff and, and water. And then before they seal it, they pump in carbon dioxide gas and that gas dissolves in the liquid. And when you open the can, you hear the pop because it's the carbon dioxide gas escaping. But in warm temperatures, the gas has a tendency to come out of solution. So you can talk about the fact that gases can actually dissolve in liquids. And when those liquids are warmed up, the gases have more of a tendency to escape. So that's a scientific concept in and of itself, but how does it relate to agriculture and how does it relate to the carbon cycle? Um, when you think about the oceans and the top 12 inches containing a lot of carbon dioxide, in fact, 51% of the earth's carbon, carbon dioxide is trapped in the oceans and a lot of it's in the top 12 inches. And there's a constant flux of that carbon dioxide coming into the oceans and escaping from the oceans because of the winds. Now, as the oceans warm, which they're doing in a lot of parts, the carbon dioxide has a tendency to, to escape and go back into the atmosphere where it further contributes to greenhouse gases. But it just a, a short example of, hey, gases can dissolve in liquids which a lot of students don't realize, they can actually see gas escaping when those liquids are warmed up, but then you relate it to the carbon cycle and how carbon dioxide um, is fluctuating through the different spheres or biospheres. So pretty interesting uh, concept. The next one in the carbon cycle talks about what happens when you mix carbon dioxide gas with water and they mix it in a chamber that looks like this. They place a cup of universal indicator in there. And because of the physical separation of liquids, they add carbon dioxide or they add um, vinegar and baking soda in the reaction chamber. And then the cup that they put in has universal indicator in it. So there's a physical separation of the liquids. So anything that happens to the color of that liquid, the universal indicator is because of the carbon dioxide gas that's being created by the mixing of baking soda and vinegar. You can go as far into that as you like. You can talk about the chemical reaction of baking soda and vinegar, or you can keep it pretty simple and just say, hey, here's what happens. But when you mix carbon dioxide with water, it actually makes it more acidic. So that's a chemical reaction that takes place. You can talk about pH and what pH means. And then you can talk about how pH is impacting the oceans and ocean life. So since the industrial revolution, the oceans have become more acidic. Um, not very much, but underwater organisms are exceptionally 
susceptible to changes in pH. And when you see things like coral bleaching, um, not only is it because of the impact of changing temperatures, but also due to changing acidity of the oceans, which scientifically has been shown to, to be happening or has happened since industrial revolution. So a lot of concepts that you can go into um, or you can, you can keep it simple. The third experiment is with our bubble makers, which is pretty neat. You put dry ice in here with water and the carbon dioxide gas starts to spill out of the nozzle. If you dip it in soapy water, a bubble will start to form that's full of carbon dioxide gas. Now, there's gloves that we ship in here as well. Sorry. And um, if they have a cotton glove on, they can actually catch the bubble. And they go crazy over this, they love it. But the scientific concepts that are in there is when that bubble pops, what happens to carbon dioxide? Does it sink or float? And that talks about the density of gases compared to gases around us right here. It also talks about why, you could talk about why does the bubble not pop when you're wearing the cotton glove and why does it pop when I'm wearing my nitrile glove? And again, it's science and a scientific concept that has to do with surface area. So all the microscopic fibers that you see in the cotton glove actually increase the surface area. And the more surface area that touches the bubble, the less likely it is to pop. So we're talking about the carbon cycle and, the, and, and what goes on with the carbon cycle. But in each of the experiments, there's also other scientific concepts that you can talk about. And all of this is in the teacher's guide. So you'll be able to, you'll be aware of all of these things that you can teach or not teach when you get the lesson. So that's a little bit about the carbon cycle trunk. We have a cool crime scene investigation trunk where they test soil samples of suspect shoes and they test it for macronutrients, um, potassium, phosphorus, and nitrogen and then they also test ph and they test the soil where the crime scene was where the scene of the crime was the wheat field and then they test suspect suspect a b and c and they're color metric tests so basically it's it's just changes in colors and they'll mix um some liquids with the soil and extract that liquid and then they'll test it for nitrogen, potassium, and phosphate or pH and it's color change. So yeah, color metric great. cards in here that you can use and they'll actually record their data. So we provide the, the place where they can record their data and the dry erase markers, and then they'll take their data. So one group will have the wheat field, another group will have suspect A, another group will have suspect B and C, and they'll actually get up and walk around and compare, the suspects will compare their data that they got to the wheat field. And one of the suspects will actually look exactly like the wheat field, and that way they'll know that that was a particular suspect that was at the scene of the crime. So that's a really fun one to do. In this particular one, students are broken up into, into groups of four. So there's a lot of different, each student, one student can test for nitrogen, one student can test for phosphorus, one for pH, um, and, and the other one. And then they can record their data. So all the students are included and they all get to do something hands-on and they all have their own responsibility for that. So that's a really neat one as well. Um, we're going to make some other lessons available because of the situation that we're in. Um, we're going to make some of those available and they go all the way from strawberry DNA extraction to forces where they actually make straw rockets. If you want to talk about Newton's three laws and how changing nose cones or changing trifoils on a straw rocket can impact distance, um, flight distance of that particular rocket, and, and several others. Um, there are science lessons like this that can be done in a lab, or we do have others where they can do things like shoot slope, where they can actually go outside and look at a hill and, and measure the slope. And these lessons are more of the environmental science-based lessons, and they're available to help 
teach students about another thing that we do, which is host the state's Envirothon competition. So the Envirothon competition is environmental science competition where students are tested in soil, forestry, um, aquatics, and soil, forestry, aquatics, and oh gosh, the other one, um, soil, forestry, aquatics. I'm on the spot now, so I'm missing it, but there's another topic as well. And um, they go out, uh, uh, wild, wildlife, sorry, wildlife. And they're all hands-on as well. Most of it's hands-on. We dig soil pits, we shoot slopes, they look at skulls and furs and pelts. And um, again, this is a free um, contest that anybody that can come and engage in, but we put the environmental science trunks together to help teach portions of the Envirothon. But now because of the situation, we're just gonna make a lot of what we have available for checkout. So that information is gonna be up on the website soon. Right now, if you go on the website, you'll just see the lessons that we have in trunks, but there will be more available shortly. So like I said, you can go to the website that I showed you earlier if you, if you want any more information about those or if you want to check those out as well. So if you don't Frank, have students... Frank, would you mind taking them to the website right now if you want to share your yeah. screen again and just show them how to get yeah, to that website? Absolutely. That'd be great. Okay, let me um, share, share my screen again and um, share screen and we will go to... I don't want to do that. Let me set up a new new window here. Sorry, you have to hear me type. I can't. Um, here we go. And let's see if I can. Here we go. Share. So here's a noble.org website. Um, and then if you scroll down, let's see if I can do that. Um, go down here to education. Well, I passed it. We can just go to education here. And then if you scroll down, you will see youth education and outreach, learn more. And then it tells you a lot about all the programs that we've got. So it is outreach. So there was a typo on that website. I apologize for that. I should have caught that. I'm sorry. So youth education outreach, our information if you need it, classroom visits. We do go into classrooms, although we probably won't for the remainder of this year. But when, when everything's back to normal or, or somewhat, we will go to classrooms. So I think our limit right now is about two hours away. We've been to Claremore, we've been to Clinton. Um, but if we do go out that far, we'd really like to service a lot of students. So what Claremore does is, is they have about 13 sixth grade classes that, that we get to teach over a day and a half. So we will do that. Our hands-on lessons are here if you want more information. And then the science exploration trunk would be here. And if you want to learn more about that, there's the trunk and then where you can go to request the trunks. So carbon cycle, CSI, chemistry's rainbow is a pH trunk where they use universal indicator and they make the rainbow. And then the big challenge at the end is you never pour acids and bases down the sink. So they have to neutralize those acids and bases before they put them in the sink. The acids and bases don't get very extreme. So there's really no danger. Um, pH 4 to pH 10, they still have to be safe using them, but, but they're not, we're not getting into pH 1 or pH 14. So um, forces in motion, I told you a little bit about that. Let's talk about the weather. They make their own thermometers using test tubes and, and little pieces of aquatic tubing that we've got. And then they also make clouds in a bottle with um, rubbing alcohol and bicycle foot pumps. And then sugar and grass is a pretty neat one. We ship refractometers out, which are these, these um, sort of monoscopes that you can look through that will actually show, tell you the sugar content of that particular liquid. So you can take sugar or you can take different grasses and mix them up and put a drop of the liquid that you extract from them in there and actually determine the sugar content of grasses or fruit juice 
or things like that. So it's very useful in agriculture when we're talking about the right time to harvest fruits. You use refractometers to, to check the optimum sugar concentration, and that's when you want to harvest. Or you really want to have the optimum sugar content in grass to improve cattle production. So all of that is mentioned in these lessons, how it applies to agriculture and how it applies to science as well. So that's that. And then the live map video lessons are here and we're in the process of shooting the video lessons for the others, other trunks as well. And then what you don't see on here are things like DNA extraction. And those are other lessons that we can get, we can make available to check out. Now I will say that things like strawberry DNA extraction might be one of those where you have to come to us to pick it up or we can drive it out to you. We might not be able to ship that one because of, of what's in it. So um, there will be more available as well. So with that, um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Keep in mind, completely free um, and available for you to check out anytime, anytime you like. So. Thanks, Frank. If there's anyone that, like there's one on here that you're curious about that you would like to see more, I'm sure Frank could open the links to show us um, what, what's contained in those links. So if there's one that, that you'd like to see examples of, we, we have time for that. Or if you have questions for him um, about what he does, then we could um, ask those questions as well. So Frank, it looks like someone would like to see a little bit more about the forces in motion. So do you mind opening that, that link and sure. just sharing a little bit? Fortune, oh, well, it's not, it's not showing up. So forces and motions are really cool one. Um, and I might be able to pull the lesson up if I go back here. Um, wants to ship it to you, Frank. <laughs> so yeah, that's what you guys will see when you click on it. That's how I you have. sign up for them. So that was a, that was a good preview for you. Let me go back to hands-on lessons here and just double check to see if it's carbon cycle, CSI, these are some other lessons that we have available, but it doesn't look like the forces is on there. And like I said, we're in the, we're in the process of updating all this and we're updating it to address, you know, the situation that we're in, but forces you get, um, you get these, I, I don't know how to explain them. It's a, it's a copper tube that has sort of a protractor on it and you can adjust the angle of the copper tube and the straw actually fits on the copper tube. And then it's got another part that you lift up and when you let it go, it forces air down out the copper tube. So every launch you get the same amount of air going into your straw. So it's, it's a nice way. Well, that might be one of the experimental flaws as well. Everybody's going to drop it different. Well, if you pick it up to the right number that's on the pump, and let it go at the same time, it should force the same amount of air out every time. So any change in distance that you get from the straw rocket is based on the engineering of the rocket itself and not the amount of air that's forced through the launch apparatus. So you get all the launchers, you get um, in that when you get all the materials that you need to make, make the straw rockets, the, the construction paper, the tape, the scissors, the straws, um, which are biodegradable. So that's kind of cool. Um, the straws are in there and then the measuring tapes. So you'll let, set the measuring tapes out. You'll put the launchers out there and then everybody can engineer their own rocket. And then you can have a contest to see whose rocket shot the best. And then you can modify the rockets. Everybody can do the same one, the same nose cone, the same trifoil, or then you can use maybe two fins instead of three and see how that changes. Um, how far that rocket will launch. But in that lesson, we're talking about gravity, we're talking about the forces and, and how that relates to launching these things. So that's sort of the stuff that you'll get inside of that particular trunk. Frank, we have had a couple of questions come in. Uh, one teacher said that they love touring the facility um, mm -hmm. during the road trip. So when we've had the road trip and been able to tour the Noble Research Institute, she asked if there might be videos or some way to do a virtual tour uh, with a her virtual. students of the Noble Research Institute. 
That's a great question and one that we've we've talked about, but we haven't really acted on yet. We thought about having our communications group shoot a virtual tour with their with their camera equipment, but that hasn't really happened yet. Um, I'm not sure if that will be available, but that's a fantastic um, having that sort of feedback is great. Now I can take it to communications and say, hey, there's there's a demand for this. So that's fantastic. Thanks for bringing that up. And that's definitely And she something. also mentioned um, possibly being able to Skype with some of the leaders in the different areas of the NOVA research. Absolutely. So that's another thing that, that we're working on getting available. If you do want to Skype or set up a Zoom meeting, we have, um, we have, right now we have GoToWebinar and GoToMeeting. So we can set that up and, and you can join in. Um, and yes, those folks, if, if there's a topic that you're interested in, we can definitely get you in touch with those folks. And I'm sure they'd be happy to put something together. And also we're thinking about the possibility of if you get the trunk, we might be able to teach virtually as well. So what we'd probably do is set up a go-to meeting and we can hit record and teach the first class. And then every class after that, we can just replay that video. So if you're not comfortable presenting this material in, in your classroom, um, then we might be able to do that as well. Now, if you have online classes, then you can check the trunks out and you can do the experiments and teach to your students virtually, or that might be something that we can put together as well if we set that up somehow where we would join your meeting and then we could we could teach to your classroom virtually that way whether they're at their house or if they're there in the classroom with you so obviously if they're in their homes they're just going to have to watch us do the experiments but if they're in the class you can check these out and then maybe we could teach that way so that's we've been talking about that option as well Awesome. She said, thank you very much. You and then also I had another question that you uh, mentioned robotics. Uh -huh. um, I don't believe that's in a trunk. Um, so can you tell a little bit more about what y'all do with the robotics? I can. And that's really geared towards sort of Southern Oklahoma. And, and that is, so the robotics program that we host is junior bot ball for fifth graders. Um, it, it can be third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and junior bot ball is actually based out of Norman, Oklahoma, and the organization is phenomenal, and they can help you with, with whatever you need, but basically, the kits that they have available, we provide the robots pre-built, and then we provide the, the training on how to teach the code, so students learn the C language to autonomously program these robots to complete challenges. Now these challenges might be as simple as go in a straight line, turn around and come back, or use a servo, make a claw, and go out and grab a can and bring it back. So there's a lot of different challenges. And first thing a lot of people think is, well, I don't know how to code, so I'm out. But we can teach you how to do that. It's very simple. And what's incredible about these students today is if you give them just a little bit, they, they got it. I mean, they pick it up and they absolutely run with it. It's amazing how, how technologically savvy they are and how they get coding at such an early age. I took coding in college, but I have a son. He's going into third grade and we're already starting to do the C language and he's picking it up. So absolutely amazing. What we'll do if you live in Southern Oklahoma is we'll provide those robots for you as long as you agree to attend our challenge days, which are hosted two times a year in December and in May. But if you live outside of our service area, then you can get in touch with, um, it's the KISS Institute for Practical Robotics in Norman, Oklahoma, and the program is Junior Botball. They also have Botball, which is middle school all the way through the end of high school. Those are much bigger challenges, more competitive challenges. Um, we don't host that. It's really a huge endeavor to do that. Um, but the junior bot ball is not competitive. It's competitive for the student and them completing the challenge themselves. 
but it's not competitive where teams win or lose. It's really the student understanding the code and writing the code to get the, the robot to do what they want to do with it. So incredible program. If you're interested, we can give you more information if you're in our service area, um, which is really, I would say, up to about 45 minutes from here, uh, from, from Ardmore. So if you live sort of in that area, then we might be able to get you three robots. Um, but if you're outside, there's other ways you can get robots and the KISS Institute for Practical Robotics can help you out with that. There's grants you can apply for to get the robots and there's other programs available as well. So. Yeah, okay, in great. our last couple of minutes, I have uh -huh. two more questions. Um, okay it kind of relates to the robotics. So I'm going to answer or ask this one real quick. With COVID, what do you think they will do this year for the challenge days? Do you think it'll look different? To be honest, I don't know that there will be challenge days okay. unless there's a way. So I do think, and I'm not positive, so you might have to check this, but I do think there are virtual robots that students can can use their iPads and code a virtual robot on their laptop or on there that they can use. Um, so there's ways to do that if they don't have if they're at home using distance learning and they don't have a robot there with them. Um, there are ways to do that. But as far as the challenge days, I know for Noble, um, I'm fairly certain everything through the end of the year, we're not going to have any in person um, things going on next may might be another story so okay. we'll, we'll see how that how that pans out but in our last minute uh, we have one more so sure may have sure fast, but, um okay. can you give a little bit about the junior beef excellence program like what exactly is that a junior beef excellence so real quick a very limited knowledge and this is one of the great things that that the consultants host um, it falls under the youth education and outreach, but that's really a program that started in, in agriculture and they host it and they have a lot of information regarding that. But basically, um, it's a contest where students will be judged on their animal and then there's awards for first, second, third place. They're judged based on, there's a lot of different things they're judged on, but there's awards for it that the, the students bring their animals in and they're based on things like uh, the, the beef quality. So is that the junior beef program? And if you want more information about that, you can click on the website there. And then if you have more questions, we can definitely get in, get you in touch with, with Caitlin um, who oversees that program. But um, yeah, really they're based on the meat quality from their animal that they have raised. And the, the program basically buys the animal and then there's awards for um, best, best quality.